Hi, my name is John Dooley, and I am the entomologist for the United States Department of Agriculture, Plant Protection and Quarantine at San Francisco, California. My specialty is that I identify all of the white flies and armored scales that accompany shipments coming into the country from all over the world. Okay, now let's go on to Parlatoria pergandii. And for that, we're going to go back up to the first couplet of the key again. Parlatoria pergandii. If you don't have it, let me know and I'll get you one. Very good slide. Now, if you go back to the beginning of the couplets, it will say anterior spiracles with prespiracular pores shape elongate the oval. This fits actually the first part of the couplet so far. But then you look at the L2 and L3 lobes. And you notice they're unilobate. They consist of only one lobe. The L2, you can see it over here too, although this is stretched out because of the, uh, the canvas. But you have L2 and L3 and L1 right here. But L2, L3, L1 are all one lobe. There's no double lobes on any of them. So you know it, you can't go down to couplet number one for the first part to two. The, uh, the second part of the couplet says lobes not bilobate. And that the maker ducts are one to two barred size. And remember what I said when you go to, uh, they're not bilobate, that's good. And then you look at the marginal ducts, and this genus is one of the best ones to look at the marginal ducts to see the two barred ducts. So they're actually two barred. Very, very important. This is probably one of the most common scales that you'll run into, especially on any citrus relative, whether it's uh, what we call it, Bergera, Morea, or citrus, any rutaceous plants. It also says two barred, okay? And then glands finds abscess and plates are present. If you look down here, you see how some of these are fringed at the tip, and then some are thick. The same thing here, these are fringed, these are fringed. These are not gland spines, these are actual what they call fringe plates. And that's important for this particular tribe, the Parlatoriini, and also for the Diaspitini too. This fall is actually within the same, uh, some uh, are very close to the Diaspitini, like the level of safety, except it doesn't have the bilobate lobe on the second or third lobe. So if you follow that key, you go automatically to number four. Two barred marginal and some marginal megaducts present. If you look at plate five, figure two and three. And that, that's what these are. I'll try to get a higher power just to sh see if it does any better. Two barred megaducts. You can see all the megaducts with the big orifice there. Sometimes I'll caution you when you look at these, you re they're really thick but they may not look like they're too barred. If you see them really thick and big like that, especially along the margin, try it that way first when you go through the key. That's a pretty a good indication that they are too barred. And like in science, there are always exceptions. So uh, don't get frustrated, just be happy. Uh, anyway, and then they, a lot of times when they're too barred, they have these huge orifices on the other side as well, the openings. Those openings usually have to come up through the derm. I believe most of these are wax secreting, but I'm not quite sure of that. And as I mentioned, these are the plates that you can see they're intricately uh, fringed, and you'll see on some of the other species in genera, they're even going to be more elaborate and more saw-like. So that's very important for this particular genus. There are four pairs of lobes present with the L with lobe four wider and notched several times, and what they call paraphysis absent. Paraphysis, in my earlier talk, are elongate structures that start at the margin and may be shorter than the length of the medium lobes or longer than the length of the medium lobes, and they go up toward the medium. These have no paraphrases. These things are actually just sclerotization uh, connecting the lobes and has something to do also with maybe with the microducts. The paraphrases, you'll see them later, but they're apted on this. 
the next I think the next slide will show you paraphrases. So they are absent. And then the fourth lobe, if you count the lobes, here's the median L1, L2, L3. Here's L4. L4 can be anywhere a reduced lobe with a spike on it like this one. It has a spine, which is not really a spine. It's just an acute, sharpened uh, uh, apical area. Or it could be actually, in some gen uh, species, it's shaped like a plate. If you, it's hard to see here, each lobe, just for your information, has an associated CD. You can see a little bit of it here that actually designates the beginning of that lobe. And in order to find the fourth lobe that may be developed and look just like a plate along the margin, you count the CD to the fourth CD, and that will give you the position of the fourth lobe. Uh, on this particular one, the CD, I think, is maybe right here. It looked like it could have, no, I'm sorry, probably right here. But it may have broken off. Sometimes they break off. For the most part, they still stay intact. But this is the fourth lobe. Now, Pergandii, according to this, it says, uh, was it a present one? That it's notched several times. That's a mistake in the key, so you just found a mistake. Pergandii is, is notched. It's not notched. This is Pergandii. Pergandii actually has this apical sharp tooth at the end. So the key itself, if you want to write in there, write down not notched several times. Just for your record. One bit of caution for all these identifications that you're doing here and you did with the allorotids and the aphids, always go back to specimens and compare them when you're first starting out because you will make mistakes and a lot of these structures will be confusing in the beginning. Uh, but don't get discouraged because it's actually a lot of fun finding out the variation in the um, highly variable forms of a lot of these. But anyway, this is Pergandii, and as I said before, Pergandii is a big pest. It actually attacks, I think, over 100 different plants, but the great majority are in the rotaceous group, the citrus. And it is a, it is a very bad citrus uh, pest, and unfortunately it occurs all over the U.S., and for your information, Parlatoria has probably around 20 to 30 species worldwide. So it does get very involved in trying to identify the species if you get something, especially from an unknown country or unknown host. This is Polyphicus, but primarily on citrus. Okay, if you want to take, uh, oh, one other thing on this, and I'm going to reemphasize this because we're going next. You have these little half moon structures that connect the lobes. Don't worry about that. The next one you're going to see are you're going to be structures coming out between the lobes or at the base of the lobes, okay?